My teacher gave me a review guide to follow, okay. so I have a few questions here that we can go over. Okay. It, can you verbalize them? If they can be verbalized, yeah. it, uh, then we can do it. If they can't be verbalized, then you'd need to take a picture of it and send it to me. In other words, if you have... No, they can be verbalized. I wrote down here. All right. What do we got? Go. You, you verbalize it. I'll write it on my screen, and then we'll solve it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So the first one goes parentheses three plus the square root of five. Close parentheses. Parentheses four minus square root of five. Close parentheses equals a plus b, no, equals a, a, like the letter a. Okay. Plus b, square root of 5. Mm, okay. And then it goes where a and b are integers. Okay. Then, then what is the value of a plus b? Is this a plus b in parentheses like that? No, it's just a plus b and then square root of 5. Okay, well, we should be able to figure this out. Let's mm -hmm. multiply the, in other words, first of all, let's be sure of one thing here is we have one equation and two variables. So there's no way we're going to ever be able to solve for A or B separately. We might be able to solve for A plus B. It depends on how it comes down. This is a bit of a strange problem, but we'll start by multiplying these two together. What do you get? Have you been taught FOIL? Uh, yeah. Okay. FOIL these two things together. What do you get? Okay. Just do it verbally out loud, and I'll write down term by term. Okay. This, so this, first, on, this online tutoring works best that way. It really, okay. Really, I know that the student's tempted to have a paper and pencil in front of you, and that's fine, and you should have a calculator also. But rather than write it on paper and then read it, it works a little bit better if you go through your mental process out loud. Give me the oh, okay. first term, and I'll just write it, and we'll go. Okay. Um, well, the first thing you have to do is multiply 3 times 4. We get 12. And then you do the 3 times the square root of uh, negative 5. So what's that next term? Um, that would be, if I'm not mistaken, negative 3 and then square root of 5. Good. The next term? Um, square root of 5 times 4, which would be... I need uh, a sign. I need a plus or minus. Because I'm writing an expression here, and you can. there's no such thing as assuming a plus. Okay, so then that would be plus 4 and the square root of 5. Good. And the last... And 5, square root of 5 times the square root of negative 5, I'm pretty sure would be... Negative square root of 25? Which is negative 5. Okay. In other words, the square root of x times the square root of x is always x, no matter what mm -hmm. x is. Okay. So in this case, it's the square root of 5 times the negative square root of 5. So you still mm -hmm. get 5, but there's a negative sign in front of it. Okay. Yeah. Now let's go up and simplify this expression. And by that, we can add the first term to the last term. What's that? Mm, um, 12 minus. Seven? Yeah. And then combine the middle two terms. That would be negative 3 plus 4, which is, I'm pretty sure, positive 1. Uh-huh. 
Huh? And plus 1 square root of 5. Okay. Now, let's compare it to this thing they gave us up here. What's A and what's B? Um, the A um, would be 7. And B? And the B would be uh, 1 square root of 5. No, just the 1. Notice oh, just one? B oh, is yeah, just the coefficient of the square oh. root of 5. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. So one. now A plus B is 8. So in this particular case, we actually were able to solve for A and B individually. But that's, mm -hmm. that's unusual. Usually when you have an equation with two variables, you can't solve for each variable. The only reason I was able to in this situation, because I had something on the left that looked an awful lot like something on the right. And so I was able to yeah. let A be the 7 and B be the 1. Mm -hmm. All right. What else do you have, Savannah? Um, the second question reads, would the square root of 8? Eight, 8 or A? 8. Parentheses, 2, square root of 2, plus 8, close parentheses. And then the question says, find an equivalent expression. Okay, so they just want us to distribute and simplify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got to multiply that term by both terms. So what do you get when you multiply that by this? Um, In other words, this part here. Uh, 2 square root of 16. Okay, what's square root of 16? Uh, 4. Okay. So then 2 times 4 would just be 8. Okay. Plus what? Plus, um... Now we're going to multiply eight. that times that. Yeah, 8 times um, the square root of 8. I mean, 8 times... Okay. Eight. There's only one problem with this answer. That That's a good answer, except square root of 8 can be simplified down. It can? Uh-huh. The way to simplify these radicals is to find factors of this number, one of which is a perfect square. In other words, I can say the square root of 8 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, right? Oh, yeah. And then the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm never going to give an answer of square root of 8. I'm always going to give it that way. Okay. So this now becomes 8 plus 8 times 2 root 2, which becomes 8 plus 16 root 2. There's your simplified answer. 8 plus 16. Square root of 2. Uh, do I add the 8 and the 16? Or? No, can't do that. In other words, this is a number... This is a coefficient times a radical, an irrational number. Mm, okay. uh, I would not be able to add those together. I got apples and oranges here. If, mm, I had, okay. if I had 8 square roots of 2 plus 16 square roots of 2, now I got apples. And 8 plus 16, that's going to equal 24 root 2. In other words, my apple is that. And I got basically one apple plus two apples is three apples, which is this answer. So you can add stuff together, but it has to be the same kind of things. And this, oh, okay. that's a, a whole integer, and that's an irrational number. So you can't really add those together. I mean, oh, okay. I could approximate it, but they don't want you to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. I could write that as a decimal, and then I could add them together. But if I want a precise answer, it's what I've circled down here. 8 plus 16 root 2. That's the proper okay. mathematical answer. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, the next one, now, the next one if, is... If you do have stuff that you can't verbalize, 
the best way to do it is to just take a picture with your cell phone and send it to my email and then I bring it up on my screen and we're both looking at it. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I can verbalize all of this. Okay. I've, I've written it down. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, the square root of 6r equals the square root of r to the second power minus 16. Okay. And then the question reads, what is the product of all solutions to the above equation? What's the product of all solutions to this equation? Yeah. Okay. What's the first step in solving this for r? Um, oh. Let's get rid of the radical sign. How do I yeah. get rid of the radical sign? We, we square everything? Square everything. Well, when you square everything, you get this. Yes. Right? Okay. Now I'm looking at a quadratic. How do I solve a quadratic? Um, I know it's a quadratic because I got an R squared, I got an R, and I got a 16. So it's more than just a quadratic. A quadratic is technically anything that just has an R squared or an X squared. But this is a quadratic that has R squared and R. There's a certain way to solve those always. What do I got to do? I'm not sure. You want to put everything on one side and leave zero on the other. So then you would subtract both sides by 6r and then leave. Let's put it in order. 2 minus 6r. Now factor. Oh, okay. Factoring is so important because you have to do it so often. Yeah. And the reason factoring is a solution is because if I can get two things multiplied together that are equal to 0, then I know one of them has to be 0. Yeah. So I can't solve it as long as it's in that form. But once I get it in this form, then I'm going to set that equal to zero and that equal to zero, and I'm going to come up with my two solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how do you factor that? Um, you do uh, 1 times negative 16. Mm -hmm. My teacher actually has, um, has us do like a chart called the A times C B chart. Okay. Are you good and, at doing that? Am I what? I'm sorry? Are you good at doing it that method? Yeah, I am actually. Okay. Go ahead. I don't really care which method you use. There's like four or five of them. Uh, oh, I, have, okay. I have my own method that's quite simple. Some of the methods they teach I hate, like the California method or the diamond method or perhaps even the method you're using. But if it works for you, that's fine. So we oh, okay. um, do I do it here on paper? Is that okay? Yeah, I, I mean you could do it out loud, but I'm not really sure the method you're using. So the only thing I really care about at this point is the answer. Okay. I'll do it real quick. Okay. See, my next step would be determine both signs. And now I would be looking for factors of 16 that subtract to the number 6. Yeah, I got negative 8 and positive 2. Okay, good. You know how to do it. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. So what are my two values for R? Um, um, plus 2 and negative 8? Negative 2. In other words, here's what I'm going to do. Your, because you're, you're equaling them to, equal to zero. Okay. Okay, then R would equal negative two and the other R would equal positive eight. Right. So I got R, excuse me, R equals negative two or R equals eight. Now, we're dealing with radical equations which are frequently one of these solutions is not valid. Mm -hmm. Can you tell which one? Um, well, do I plug them in? Like, yeah, plug in minus 2. 
What happened? Okay. Uh, well, then I'd get I'd get um, negative twelve. Ah, square um, root of negative twelve. Yeah, got square root of up here. Well, can you take the square root of negative twelve? No, I can't. That's not a solution then. That's an extraneous solution. Oh. Okay. Now try eight. What do you get? I would get um, forty square root of forty eight. Equals, um, square, root square root of, of six. 64 minus 16, which is 48. Yeah. So that solution works. R equal 8. Now, if I remember right, this was not the one that said, what's the product of the two solutions? or. Yeah, the question was, um, what is the product of all solutions to the, to the equation? So what is the answer? Uh, 48. The square root of 48. No. The, sol 48. the solutions they're talking about are the solutions we came up with for R. So then... If this negative 2 was not extraneous, then the product of these two things would be minus 16. Well... Um, we only have one solution, so it's hard to multiply a product with just one solution. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the teacher is looking for here. I would suppose 8 might be the answer, but I don't know, because usually when they say the product of all solutions, well, there's only one solution, so I guess the product of one solution is it. Okay, so then, my, so then the product would be 8. I think so. I mean, usually when you talk about product, you're talking about two numbers being multiplied together. Mm -hmm. We only have one number, so I'm not sure exactly what the teacher means. I don't know if, if he didn't realize that one of these solutions was extraneous. Um, let me check because I'm pretty sure she uh, gave us the answers as well. So okay, let me just, good. Yeah. yeah, find the answer yeah. and see what they say. Ah, I noticed that if we plug in minus 2, we do get the square root of minus 12 equals the square root of minus 12. Well, here it says the answer should be 8. So, yeah, you, you were right. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and minus 2 is definitely a bogus solution, although it actually works, especially if you use complex numbers. Have you been taught imaginary numbers yet? Yeah, I actually have a bit of a difficulty with them. They tend to confuse me, but yeah, I've you know, learned. Let me, let me straighten that out real quick. Okay. Square root of minus 16. The very first thing you want to do is separate it into the square root of minus 1 times the square root of the positive number. Okay. This is always I. Square root of 16 is 4, so that's 4I. Okay, what's the square root of minus 25? Um, 5? No, no, 5I, no, 5I. Five 5I, five five in other words, you still need to take out, you can do it in either order, but take out that square root of negative 1, because that we can always make i. And square okay. root of 25 is 5, so it's 5i. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's really the only tough thing about imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers, the concept can be very confusing, but mm -hmm. actuality of dealing with them is quite simple. And for oh. more, let's just go through one other thing, as long as we have another few minutes here. What's I squared equal to? Um, I squared is equal to... Um, um, What's the square root of minus 1 times the square root of minus 1? 1. Minus 1. Minus 1. Remember, the square root of any number times the square root of that same number is the number. 
Oh, okay. okay. And this is really important because whenever you're dealing with imaginary numbers, you get a lot of I squareds. Yeah, I do. So whenever you get an I squared, change it to minus one. And that becomes a real number. In other words, you get a lot of answers like this. Nine minus two I uh, minus four I squared. Okay? Well, mm -hmm. if I change my I squared to minus one, then I have nine minus two I minus four times minus one. Now it's 9 plus 4, 13 minus 2i. Mm -hmm. You can always simplify a number down into its a plus bi format. But well, in order to do it, you almost always are converting all of your i squareds to minus 1. Okay. Okay. And then there is, there is further. i cubed is, well... It's i times i squared, so it's minus i. And then i to the fourth is positive 1. And then it repeats. In other words, i to the fifth is the same as i. i to the sixth is the same as i squared, and so forth and so on. So i to the fifth is i. i to the sixth is minus 1 i to the seventh is minus i, and i to the eighth is positive one. So i to the twelfth is positive one. i to the hundredth power is positive one. Oh, okay, I get it. All you have to do is remember this part right there. And mm -hmm. then you can do what is i to the 502 power. Well, I know that's divisible by four. Take the remainder. That's got to be equal to i squared, which is equal to minus 1. Okay. Okay? All right. Now that's imaginary numbers in a nutshell. Not quite enough time to really cover it in depth, but it doesn't really get much harder than what I just went over there. Oh, okay. That's good. Okay. There's one more question that I have. Okay. Okay. Um, it's okay with the with the yeah, time, that's David. Fine. Sure, no, that's fine. I don't have a seven thirty appointment, so I can do one more. All right. Thank that. you so much. Thank yeah. you. Um, it goes. Uh, the following function L gives the approximate percent literacy rate in India T years after nineteen hundred. Okay. And then the equation goes. Uh, T of L. Oh, no, I'm sorry, L of T. I thought L so. <laughs> if L was the literacy rate, then we need L as a function of time. And that's what yeah. that says. That's not multiplication. Mm -hmm. L is the literacy rate, and it's a function of time. In other words, on the other side of the equation, I'm going to have nothing but T's. Yeah, you have, well, on the other side, you have um, 5.3. 5.3? Uh-huh. Times 1.025 square, square root of t. Like that? Or square root of t multiplied? No, no. Like, um, like the exponent is t. Just t. Ah. So it's to the t power. Yeah, In other words, the way you would verbalize that. There actually is a lot to be gained by verbal by being forced to verbalize problems. Is yeah. it's something you don't get to do ever, right? I mean, how often do you stand up in class and verbalize a problem? Probably never. Yeah, no, never. We don't do so it's not always obvious exactly how to verbalize something. And yeah. being forced to verbalize it in these online sessions is helpful to you. Yeah. Okay? All right. So if I'm trying to solve this, this is an exponential equation. I cannot solve it algebraically. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, if it gave me some t, I could come up with what L of t was. In other words, well, it's, does it do that? Does it say what is L of t when t is 3? Or yeah. Yes, it says which are the following equivalent functions. It says which of the following equivalent functions shows as a 
constant or coefficient the x approximate number of years it took for the literacy rate to triple. Okay. What you have here is exponential growth. Have they taught you about exponential growth and exponential decay? No, that doesn't sound familiar. Okay. Well, the literacy rate starting, if you plug in zero for T, this number automatically becomes one because any number to the zeroth power is one. So you get a literacy rate at the beginning that's 5.3. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if I want to triple the literacy rate, it's got to go to 15.9. Do you see what I did? Yeah. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by 5.3. Wait, how did, again, how did you get 15.9? How did you get? Because it said it wanted to triple the literacy rate. Well, yeah. the literacy rate begins at what? 5.3. It begins when time equals zero. Mm, okay. Okay. So the literacy, okay. this coefficient is always going to be the beginning amount. Okay. Okay. So then you did, you did 5.3 times 5, and then that got you times 15. Three. Times 3. Oh, I'm sorry, because of tripping, yes. Okay, right. so then... This now, I can divide both sides by this coefficient, and I end up with 3 equals 1.025 to the t power. Yeah. Okay? Now, the only way I can solve that is using logarithms. So clearly you've had some logarithms. Mm -hmm. Well, you can use... When you're solving exponential equations, remember this is not an algebraic equation. You can't solve it algebraically. But yeah. you can solve it using logs. And I can take the log of each side. Just like in algebra, I can do anything I want to one side of the equation as long as I do it to the other. So now mm -hmm. I've got the natural log, and I just use natural log because it's kind of the, the logarithm for... Uh, calculus. Mm -hmm. Calculus, everything's natural logs. Okay? okay? Now, the properties of logs allow me to bring this t down here. In other words, if I have the log of b raised to the a power, that's equal to a times the log of b. That's all I'm doing is I'm bringing that exponent down in front. Oh, okay. Okay, and that's the secret because that turns it into an algebraic expression. Mm -hmm. Now I've got t equals natural log of 3 divided by the natural log of 1.025, and you can get that number out of your calculus. So that's the way you have to solve all algebraic, excuse me, exponential equations. Is you want to get it isolated, take the log of both sides, bring the exponent, which is a variable, down in front on the algebra line, and then solve it algebraically. In other words, once I get it to that step there, now I can solve it algebraically. Mm -hmm. But I can't as long as the variable is in the exponent. The only way to get the variable out of the exponent is to take the logs of both sides and then use the properties of logs. Okay. I don't think my teacher has ever gone over the property of logs because that doesn't... Okay. Um, well, this, without that property, this would be an inappropriate question. If you haven't hmm. been taught the properties of logs, you can't really solve this. Unless, yeah. unless they want you to solve it on a graphing calculator, maybe. Um, well, the thing is that for that one, for that one, the answer here says, uh, says L of T equals 
0.3 times 3 uh, to the power of t divided by 44.5. I'm not sure. I don't know how they got that. Well, trust me, that's this answer here. Oh, okay. The only advantage of my answer is I can convert it to a number. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, I'm not quite sure what that other answer is coming from because mm -hmm. it sounded like your answer was still a function of t. Yeah. In other words, your answer sounds like that, the starting problem. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Well, that's an answer, but it doesn't solve for how long it takes for... Uh, it the triple. Mm -hmm. If you're solving for how many years it takes for this thing to triple, then you have to plug in 3 times 5.3 into this. Um, yeah. I, and if you haven't been taught logs, I'm not sure what they want you to do on this problem. Because right, well, okay. this is clearly a log problem. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Savannah, um, let's see if I need anything else from you. You're in Florida. What city in Florida? I'm in Miami. You're in Miami. I have two sons that live in Boca Raton. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh, that's cool. I've never uh, been to Boca, but I've heard it's really pretty. Well, it's close. It's only like 30 miles north of you. Yeah, it's really not that far. Yeah. Um, so... Trujillo. Uh, is this phone number, uh, let's see, my first session is free, so there's no charge for this session. Oh. If oh. you want to schedule another session, you can do it online. Well, you've, you've figured out how to do that. Um, yeah. But you can pay for it with PayPal. Oh, okay. Everybody that I work with that's out of state, uh, does one of two things. They either use PayPal to pay or they send me a check in advance. Oh, okay. uh, PayPal is good with me, David. Oh, PayPal is very, super easy very, to use on my website. It's pretty much a two-step process and that's it. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. I, I do a lot of PayPal transactions through eBay and all those things. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, no problem. Well, about, about tonight, Juan and Savannah, I will I will let you go and let you go from here, and you're welcome to schedule. But, but, but let me ask you, and about tonight, how I pay you for tonight? No charge. My first half hour is free. Wow. Okay, I appreciate that, and for sure we're going to come to you again. And I have another daughter that is in a eight, um, seventh grade. Okay. Can you help her? I imagine that you can help her also, right? I'm sure I can. What is Savannah? Is Savannah a junior or a senior? Yeah, I'm, I'm a junior. Junior, okay. Okay, Juan, Savannah, nice meeting you, and I hope I've been a little helpful. Yes, you have. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk to you next Thank you. time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. That was super good. Yeah.